because I wanted to support Reverend Pink there. Yes, my name's Tom Barrow, lifelong Detroiter. I live on the east side of Detroit. I was born and raised here. When I die, they're going to bury me on Woodward. I'm here tonight because I wanted to show my support for Reverend Pink. Me, I've donated money. I've uh, spoken with them on occasions, gave them experts we could contact. I've done what I could do. When I come into this room and I see your faces, and I hear the energy that you exude, mm. it encourages me. That's right. Because the folks who are doing what they're doing to our town, they're using the sophistication of finance to do it. Yeah. They're using the sophistication of large numbers, which they know that no one's mind can get around those size of numbers. And they know they've got to keep people like me who understands their game quiet. I realize what they're doing. I realize that this pension business they're doing was nothing more uh, than a manner in which they were able to fund the transfer of the DIA to a private corporation. That's all it really was. They, tied, they used the word pension in a sentence so they could use that and the media could then play that. I understand that the grand bargain's no bargain for us. The grand bargain will impoverish us. And we need to understand that. And those folks who think that they're not one of them, you know, you hear some black folks, and I'm I'm one who's inclusive for everybody. But I hear some black folks who just don't understand what's going on. And they think that they are better than the rest of us. The reality is that they are one of us, they just don't know it until they get ready to try to exercise their own independence and they slap them and put them back where they belong. That's right, absolutely. I'm here because of you, Reverend Pinkney, because I believe you have the tenacity, the temerity, the gall, the chutzpah, everything that's necessary to lead a movement. I'm here to follow. But I also happen to believe that we got to take back this city in a sophisticated way using the same techniques that they're using. And so I am working on a plan for us. And when I heard Gene stand up and Gene talk, what they're doing to you for some little penny ante, little signature situation, we gave them proof. We showed them more ballots in the case than they were in the We showed them all the sealed numbers had been changed. We showed them where 61,000 out of 120,000 votes couldn't be recounted. I caught them and gave them the proof. They did nothing about it. We just saw tens of thousands of signatures that are identical. They come after you by the little pissy any day. And we showed them tens of thousands of signatures over and over and over again. We subpoena the printer's manifest, and no one's ever knew to do that. Well, I'm trained as an auditor. We got the manifest, and we saw that there's 35,000 more test absentee ballots printed that are identical to real ballots. We see cases arriving at transfer centers with no seals on them when they're supposed to be sealed at the precinct. We see this, and the media will villainize us. They will villainize us. I realize that what I'm saying is not to be out there to the world, but I want the world to understand what they're doing to your city, whether you're black or white, it makes no difference. It's your town. They're making you a stranger in your own town. They're taking everything you own, everything that you have worked <coughs> so hard for. They're taking it. And they're taking it in their own, what they think is a sophisticated way, and they think you're too dumb and too stupid to understand and to see. And I guess I will close by simply saying that we've got to do what they're doing. That's right. We've got to use the same system to take it back. And I'm working on a plan. I'm working on a plan. The lawyers are reviewing that plan. Some people who know me know that I'm a pretty deliberate kind of guy. And I believe that this town belongs to every Detroiter, black or white, Jew or Gentile. That's right. That's right. I believe whether you're rich or poor, this is your city. I believe this is a city that should be inclusive of everybody. And I know of my Uncle Joe, when you know, I, I, I met my uncle when I was older. And I didn't know how famous he was until I got older. To me, he was just an uncle growing up, and that's Joe Lewis, Joe Lewis Barrow. And when I sat in the house in Las Vegas, in the living room with Uncle Joe, sitting at the dining room table, just him and I, I came to realize what he stood for and what he represented, and why so much of America loved him. Because he transcended it all. 
he stood for that which no one else could stand for or unify the world and this, this country to be. It's now time for us. I know I'm in this room preaching to the choir. I know Reverend Pinkney, you the choir master. I'm preaching. I can't preach to you, you the choir master. But the unions today are not our daddy's unions. The, the, the folks today, the churches today, are not our parents' churches. It's different. They have used money and finance to co-opt them. They have come with this thing, this space-based initiative, and then they created these charter schools because they were concerned about Catholic schools taking all the money, so they created charter schools. And now funnel the money away, they take your public dollars that you built the Detroit public schools with, and then now have you paying the debt while they transfer the schools. Yeah. And everybody thinks that it's us who are running the schools. We're not running the schools, the state ran it into the ground, the state's continuing to do so. But folks don't understand it's the sophistication of the finance that they're using. So as I tell you, Reverend Pinky, our group, Citizens for Detroit's Future, is strongly supportive. We want to be there, and we will be there when you call upon us. And we're not, I, I'm here tonight because I wanted to see for myself. And, and I just believe so deeply in my city. And what I see happening, it hurts me to my very quick. It hurts me inside, as I'm sure it hurts so many more of you. So for that reason, when the time comes to stand to help us do what we're going to try to do, I ask that you will help us. I ask that you will hit those streets and we'll do what we're going to need to do because I believe if our plan is successful, I deeply believe that Detroiters are doing the right thing. It's being co-opted. And it's so far into people's minds that people can't imagine that it's happening. But we're seeing it. We're seeing it. And it's not just me. Hundreds of people see it. We're there. So we know what's going on. Our challenge is, is to get the world to become aware. And for that reason, uh, we're, we're going to fight. We're going to stand and fight. So thank you very much, Reverend Pinkney. I appreciate that. Thank you all for listening. Uh, Cecily McClellan.